Council Member Kalos. And thanks, Jane. Um, I'm Diane Levitt, as you now have heard a few times. Um, and in my role as Senior Director of K-12 Education at Cornell Tech, I bridge the campus to the New York City Department of Education and work closely with a handful of schools, most notably PSIS 217, our adopted K-8 partner here on Roosevelt Island. Uh, okay, let's see if I can make this work. teachers, and students here in New York City. Um, our work falls into five broad buckets. Our work at PSIS 217 is captured by the first bucket as a catalyst for computing education at the school. The second, helping to build curriculum that prepares teachers and students for the digital age. And the final bucket, engaging Cornell Tech students and faculty in the life of the school. As a convener, we've established a conference called To Code and Beyond that brings together educators, nonprofit leaders, policymakers, and funders from across the city. We've held three To Code and Beyond conferences. The first two were conferences where speakers addressed issues of K-12 computing content standards, in other words, what are we teaching? And then access for all students. How can we make sure that students, regardless of income, regardless of neighborhood, regardless of uh, even learning ability, are all getting access to technology curriculum? The third was a workshop on e-textiles, attended by teachers from 25 schools across the city, and led by Dr. Kylie Pepler, an associate professor at Indiana University and director of their creativity lab. So e-textiles integrate electronic circuits and computer technology with cloth, allowing designers to embed fabric-based items like clothing, puppets, bookmarks, bags, with electronics like LEDs, speakers, and wearable computers. E-textiles are powerful both because they improve student uh, learning outcomes, student, students learn the, uh, the rudiments of uh, computing better uh, using e-textiles, but also because they broaden participation in STEM by uh, including a more diverse body. To learn more about getting students workplace ready for the digital age, we hosted a boot camp this summer for a program called Generation Tech, a summer technology and entrepreneurship class uh, from the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship and the New York City Economic Development Corporation. 50 students from low-income schools spent two weeks on our campus learning to collaborate, to code, and to write and pitch business plans. We were very impressed by the energy and the enthusiasm of these students and the very high quality and high standards of their uh, program leaders. We learned that giving, given the right tools, students can uh, achieve very surprising things. At the end of their program, the students pitched their projects to a group of judges. Uh, the winning app 
was one that enables groups of friends to use GPS to track multiple stops en route and be able to see where each other is on their way to, uh, well, they didn't call it a bar, but it looked like maybe that was where they were all coming. <laughs> it was amazing. We are very excited about our partnership with PSIS 217. Our steering committee, made up of rep representatives from the PTA, the school, and now joined by uh, representatives of our elected officials, meets monthly to plan our engagement and check in on the progress that we're making. Cornell Tech will be an active, visible presence at PSIS 217. Working together, we're building a school that will truly prepare students to be citizens and creators in the digital age. To date, we've connected the school to a variety of tech teacher training opportunities. Middle school math teacher attended a three-day workshop for a program called Bootstrap. I have to tell you that this program was developed by a Cornell alum, but it's a citywide program promoted by uh, Code.org as well. It's a game design platform that teaches algebra and computational thinking. She also partic participated in this summer's uh, Games for Change Student Challenge teacher training, which uses uh, another game design platform called Global Aurea. We brought in consultants to work with middle school teachers last spring to develop an interdisciplinary project-based learning curriculum titled, Can Roosevelt Island Be Energy Independent? Students will be working on this project later in the year. We're using our new environmentally conscious uh, campus construction project as one of their laboratories. We've introduced the game design platform Coasters to the Beacon After School Program. Coasters is unique because it's the only platform that teaches elementary school students to write code in Python, which is an actual authentic web design language um, used by professionals, web development language, excuse me. You may have heard about our Hack Roosevelt Island Tech event last April. 35 graduate students worked with 85th, 6th, 7th, and a few 8th graders to build projects that demonstrated concepts related to water conservation and recycling. Using data we provided, they designed and demonstrated computer games using the Codesters platform. As you can see, everyone was very engaged and had a great time. Jane and I love the pictures from this day, so we make you look at a lot of them. <laughs> That's my favorite. This summer, we piloted a summer camp designed to teach computer science in the context of science, developed with the American Museum of Natural History. The two-week course taught students to collect data on birds in Central Park and here on Roosevelt Island, and analyze it and report it using code that they wrote in Python. The students met with an ornithologist at the museum who took them on a behind-the-scenes tour and on a bird-watching walk uh, through Central Park. The museum has decided to build on the success of this program, uh, and we'll be, we hope to offer a similar camp focused on climate change uh, next year. As you can see, the students had a surprise visit from an important technologist, our own uh, city council member, Ben Kalos, who taught our students a bit about writing and debugging code. This year, we'll hold our second tech event, Let's Code Roosevelt Island, on October 30th. Since it's so close to Halloween, we'll be using Scratch, the block coding language developed at MIT, to create some spooky online projects. 70 of our students have volunteered to mentor the PSIS 217 students. I just uh, thought I would put up for you an example of a Scratch Halloween pro project coded in entirely by kids. So I'm just going to point.
these blue blocks here, that's what block coding is. Instead of students having to write the code out word by word, they pick blocks that are in English. Behind that is the code. The students don't need to know it. It's really cool. You could do it too. Go to scratch.mit.edu. All of you will be coding before midnight. We're very excited to be creating and rolling out a comprehensive computing curriculum for teachers and students this year at PSIS 217. Cornell Tech has hired a master computer science teacher to develop the sequence for this curriculum. She'll be giving all teachers a broad overview of what computer science is and introducing them to the main concepts we want every child to know by the eighth grade so that they can think about embedding these ideas in their lesson planning. She'll also help teachers in grades four and up build specific lessons this year to start introducing those concepts. We'll add lessons for third grade next year and uh, pre-K one and two the year after so that in three years, we will have computing embedded in every class pre-K through grade eight. I don't think there's another school in the city that's doing that. We'll have many other activities this year at PSIS 217. In addition to our Let's Code event, we've invited Mrs. Beckman to bring some students to our campus in Chelsea for a tour and a panel with our graduate students on careers in technology. We know that uh, one of the most important ingredients to access to technology is awareness of the opportunities in technology. So we want to make sure we arm all of our students with that. Um, some of our students will demonstrate uh, some of the product projects they're working on and talk about their academic and career path. We'll be holding a family coding night so that parents of our younger students can get an idea of what they can build with code and resources that they can use at home to engage with technology. We're planning multiple field trips to our campus construction site. I'm not looking at Andrew while I say this. I think I might have mentioned it to him, but maybe not. So this is a good place for him to hear it in front of my boss. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll also be keeping parents informed about the exciting tech uh, in the school through the monthly link newsletter. Finally, I want to tell you about a new initiative announced by the mayor several weeks ago. You may have read about it. It's called CS for All, and in that true spirit of the name, CS for All is a 10-year, $80 million public-private partnership that will introduce computer science in every school in the DOE, every school. We're excited to be in partnership with the DOE and CSNYC, the nonprofit uh, managing the initiative, and look forward to contributing to the city's work with what we're learning at PSIS 217 and bringing the professional development and curriculum being offered by the DOE here to Roosevelt Island. Thank you very much.